Hi, I'm Oliver from Geringa. Today we have an unboxing of an Onroad RG6. It's also representative for the RG2, which is a small brother with 2 kg payload. The RG6 has 6 kg payload in force fit. In form fit, it can even lift up to 10 kg. So, some specifics about Onroad. You will need a quick change adapter to mount it to your robot, uh, which is very handy because you can change over the different grippers easily within a matter of seconds. To control it, you will use a compute box from on the robot, which enables uh, the communication through digital inputs and outputs, Modbus, TCP, or even IP. All right. After the unpacking, uh, we will mount it to the OVO i5 and after that I will show you how to control it through Modbus TCP and the OVO i5. Alright, let's go ahead. So this is the box from a robot. It's a quite nice box actually. It closes with a magnetic strip and when you open it you can probably not see it because it's reflecting but in the cover you see the contents of the box, which is gripper and two Torx keys. One in size 10, another one in size 20. It has a cover here, by foam, and then another piece to make sure the gripper stays in place. And this is how it looks inside. It's nicely fit in. Alright, let's take it out. So, here it is. The fingertips can be easily replaced. You just need to loosen or unscrew these two screws and replace them. You can 3D print your own fingers or other custom fingers, however, if you want to uh, manufacture them. Alright, so to mount it on the oval with a quick changer, we just have to snug it in. That's it already. Everything else is prepared. Okay, so now we are ready to operate the gripper already. Let's go ahead and have a look at how to do that. Let's have a look at how we set up the OnRobot RG6 inside our Obu PE and how we can control it through Modbus TCP. For that, first we go to Settings, Robot Tool Calibration. And here you see already we have the RG6 side, but when you start first, it will be empty. Only the flange center will be there. We have set up a couple of other tools already. So what you do, you go to kinematics calibration and set up here the tool center point. We have only a dimension in Z direction here, the 278.6 millimeters. We first give a name to the kinematic and then we add the value and click on add. So it appears here. Next, we go to dynamics calibration. And here we add the center of gravity, which includes the payload and the gravity center, which is here also only in Z direction. And we have a payload of 1.31 kilograms. Where do you get these values? You can go to the web interface of on uh, yeah, of on robot of the compute box you log in and this is what you see you see immediately there's a compute box connected and what kind of gripper is connected here you can also check the status is it busy is it is a grip detected and the current state of it you can control by using the sliders here also the gripping width and the force as well so what we need to do for the tool setup is we go to TCP COG. So there's still no OBO inside the OnRobot software. So we choose a robot that has no adapter. So we get the right dimensions and values over here. You see we have the tool center point with 278.6 millimeters and the center of gravity given here. So Back in the programming, uh, after we edit these two uh, setups, we go back to tool calibration 
enter a new tool name, choose the correct kinematics name, and the correct dynamics name, and click on add here as well. Then we have set up our tool. What we need to do now is because when you start up uh, the Obo PE, you need to choose the tool name, right? So usually you have the flange center in the beginning, then we choose the RG6, save and start up. So the robot will initialize new with the settings we currently have done. And we see also the Modbus device is successfully connected. This will not appear first when you start. For this, we actually need to add the Modbus device. As on robot has all uh, connection through the compute box here or the communication, even though we use different grippers, we only need to connect the compute box once, which we have here already. You see down here the values we have need to add. So it's a TCP connection. The slave ID depends on how you have connected your gripper to the robot. 41 is here for the quick changer, the normal quick changer. We have chosen 500 milliseconds for the response time, 10 hertz frequency. The IP uh, of the compute box we have changed to our uh, network. So it, it fits our network and the port to be chosen is 502. Then you click on add and it will appear that the Modbus device is connected su successfully. Next thing what we need to do is configure the IOs, which I have done already here. What we need for this application and for the basics is uh, the width uh, with an, the address one. Please pay attention. We have here the addresses given in hexadecimal not in decimal only. So this is a register output. We can read and write those. Uh, we can, for the RG6, put values in between of 0 and 1,600. And for the RG2, we can give values from 0 to 1,100. This is millimeters multiplied by 10. So for the RG6, it's from 0 millimeters to 160 millimeters. For the force with the address 0, and also register output because we can read and write it. Uh, we have the possibility to give values for the RG6 between 0 and 1200 Newton. Oh, sorry, it's not Newton, it's also multiplied by 10. So we have from 0 Newton to 120 Newton. For the RG2, the range is from 0 to 400. Then we have the control, which is on address 2. The control allows us to grip and stop, for example. For grip, we, we will give um, the value 1. So this means not actually only grip, but adjust the fingers, basically, to the target width we have given. Because also, when you want to open the gripper, you will send the grip command and uh, control the gripper like this. Then we have a status, it's the address 10C. Here you can see immediately the addresses are given in hexadecimal, not in decimal. Pay attention to this, please. For control, uh, sorry, for status, we have, for example, grip detected. This is what we will be using here. We will also give uh, get back a value busy or if the safety switches are triggered then we have uh, a register input, uh, also status is a register input. We can only read those, cannot write here. And the other register input we use is the actual width. So this is the value the gripper currently actually has. In the next tab, IO state, we can see the current states. For the actual width, we have here 1048, which translates to 104.8 millimeters, status is zero, nothing is happening. And also here for the control force with no values are given currently. Under IO control, we can control the gripper. Uh, we can give the force here with on robot grippers, 
the lower the force is, the lower the speed of the fingers will be. So if we give a force of 1000, for example, send, and we will send a zero, send zero for the width. That means we close the gripper completely. For this, I will change over to, and you can see when I know send the one, I use the send one here, then the gripper will close. When we go back to IO state now, we see we have the status two. Why is that? There's a grip detected. Why is a grip detected? Although nothing is inside the grippers, we still have the fingers. And the width we are giving here is in between the mounting position of the fingers. And the fingers, they have a certain height. So we can see the actual width in between is 96. So the gripper detects that something is gripped. So when we want to open this again, we take another value like 1000 for 100 millimeters. We send this and we send again one for control. So the gripper opens again. All right. So after you've done this, the gripper is set up to use with Modbus. So you can go over into the programming section and as you see, I have prepared already a little bit. You've seen it in the scene before that there are some cups and the, well, one cup and the lid on the table. And let's have a look how we, first of all, control the gripper in a program and then how we can use this. So what we are going to do here is we, we have the, the bowl on the table. We will move it from A to B. Let me show you the scene for that. So we will move the bowl from the left position where it's right now to the right position that is empty. And after that, we will take the lid, put the lid on top and close it. All right, so first of all, we have an initialization here where we have the home position and then we will set the initial values. So we can set the force by adding the set command from condition basic here, we have set. And then we can choose here IOs. We can set different things here, variables, two parameters, collision class, uh, or the IOs. So we can choose here then Modbus and then our analog output because we can send values, actual numbers. We have the control, force, and width. So first we want to set the force, we set it here to 120 Newton. We do this um, because we want the fingers to operate at a high speed. After that, we set the width to release, which we have defined at 130 millimeters. This is wide enough so we can grip the, the bowl and the lid. Then we wait shortly to make sure the commands are received by the compute box and then we set the grip command one after that we reset the force to 30 which is three newton to make sure that we do not grip the, the sensitive parts too hard and deform it so then for opening what we can do because we cannot detect any grip right we wait until the actual width is close to our opening um, or our target width. We do that uh, in order to make sure the gripper doesn't move on with the next command before the gripper actually reaches its position. So then we have here a loop, but at the moment we have only one time because you can see after this program is finished, there is no more material that uh, we could use to to go on with with another loop. So then we have here a few block commands. So it's like a folder structure, which helps to structure your program nicely and have a good overview. So first here we have pick it, place the, of the bowl. We place it. We pick it from A and place it at B. For that we move to the bowl, right? And then the interesting part. Here again is gripping the ball. You can set the force at three Newton, set a width 122 millimeters, which is slightly um, 
below the actual gripping width of, of the part you want to grip. So to make sure that the gripper actually detects the grip, we wait shortly and set the grip commands. And here we wait for status to be two, which is gripped. After it's gripped, we move to the place position and release. After we, we are in the place position, we set the force here to 120 Newton in order to open fingers quicker than they were closing. We set the width again to our initial value of 1300. We shortly wait, set the grip command and wait until it's opened. Here we have 1250. What you are going to do is uh, you start uh, trying out some values and what you see that is working, you will continue with that. So after we release, we move into a safe position. Same we are going to do with the lid. It's actually pretty much the same, just that we have a bit different gripping width. Uh, we have here also the three Newton force and we will also release the lid with a high force in order to make the fingers move open quickly. Also here we use 1300. So we again move into a safe place and finally we want to close the lid. So for this, we do the same what I've shown you before. We set the force again high because we don't need to grip anything. We just want the fingers to be closed in order to push down the lid in the middle. So this is why we set the width to zero and we can wait for grip. Oh, no, sorry, we wait for the status that something is gripped. And then we can push down the lid. We wait for a moment and go back into a safe position. After that, we want to push the lid down on the outer position, so outside. So we open uh, the gripper a little bit. Uh, we have here a width of 1000. And after it's open, we wait until the width is about 950 or bigger, equal to 950. And then we will again just move down push into two different positions. And after this is finished, we move back to our home position. All right, then we can have a look at our video now. So we start the program, the gripper opens a little bit, starts gripping the bow, moves it over, place it in a position. We pick up the lid, it takes a bit, little bit longer here because the lid has a smaller gripping width. And then we push in the middle and on the outside and go back into our home position. That's it for today.